Hello, my name is Eric Hawkins, but please call me Hawk. I'm an instructor and course author for Berkeley Online, and I'm here today to talk about Reason 8's awesome new drag and drop features. They're a serious improvement to sort of overall workflow and creative inspiration. So check this out. Over here in Reason, I can drag anything directly from the browser, which is now located on the left-hand side of your screen, directly into the rack. I could drag a synth in, and then I can immediately start playing it. And I could click on the instruments again here and drag, for example, a Kong drum designer in, and like I said, immediately start playing it. Uh, I could drag in an NXT and start playing it. It's as simple as that, drag and drop. And that also goes for all of the effect devices as well. Now, I could go ahead and take one of these effect devices, like the Scream here, and I could drag it underneath the device, and it's going to patch the device through the effect device and then into the channel. So I'll do this, and then we'll take a look at the back here. We can see that it's gone out of the subtractor into the Scream device and back up into the channel right here, and we can hear it as well. Make sure that I have it selected down here in my sequencer. And I can also drag it directly onto the channel itself and it will automatically insert itself on the channel in the insert position. Check that out. And you can see the patches have all been made for you in the back. And when I play this now, we'll hear the echo effect. So it doesn't get easier than that. Uh, actually, it does get easier than that. We can also use this function in here called the browse focus mode, which when we click on anything that has a patch browser button on it, it will automatically take us to that area of our user library. So if I click on the patch browser here for the subtractor, we automatically see that there are the subtractor patches and we can load in a new sound here. We can either take the sound and drag it onto the device itself. That works. Let's turn off the echo here. Or what I prefer to do actually is just to take it and double click on it. Let me turn off the scream here so we can actually hear this patch. So make sure that that's selected again there so we can see that it's highlighted in orange. And that indicates to us that um, we are in the browse focus mode. And I can double click on something here. And there we see everything loaded up. So besides dragging on the actual patches, the instrument patches, we can also get into dragging things uh, into samplers and onto the actual drum pads and Kong. So again, anything that has a patch browser, that's going to bring us over to the browse focus mode here. And if we click on this, we'll automatically go to the Kong kits. I can click on that. You can see Kong has been loaded there. Uh, but we can also click on this here for the actual browse drum patches, which are the actual pads. And if we click on that, then we get to uh, our Kong library. If we go up here, we've got Kong sounds and samples. And let's check out the snare drums here. And in the snare drums, we have the .drum patches which are the actual pads themselves. So if I click on one of these, double click on one of these, and I have this pad highlighted, it's going to load this sound to that pad. Let's, move, let's scoot this over here. 
Make sure this is selected again here. Double click on this one. Load up a different one. So those are the actual pad patches. You can see what's happening here. We actually load one of these up here. And we can also actually drag the samples themselves directly onto the pads. You can see it automatically loads in a little NN Nano sampler in here. And just drag it onto whatever I pad I want. So that's, that's also a really great and fast way of creating a kit. This also works for the Dr. Octorex. Go back up here, drag Dr. Octorex in here. There's Dr. Octo. And you can see that it already has the uh, browse focus mode selected and set up for the Dr. Octo patches, which would load in eight individual Rex loops here. So let's say I wanted some percussion or bongos. Just double click on this and it'll load in my bongos. There we are. But what if I want to load in just an individual Rex loop? I can drag and drop a Rex loop in here directly to the Rex loop programmer. And I can click on this and we're browsing for a loop. So there are some individual loops there. I could go back up to the main library here and let's load in an instrument loop. How about a guitar loop? How about, I like these funk wah wah guitars, one of these. So I'm already in browse focus mode for the loops and I can double click on that. And there it is, loaded in. Interestingly, uh, since I'm on the Rex loop, it's worth noting that you can also drag these directly to the sequencer window. Drop it in there and it'll come in at your song's tempo. You can see that it's already perfectly looped and everything. Uh, for the two bar loop that just came in. However, keep in mind that if you drag a Rex loop into the sequencer, it's going to be converted to an audio file. Even with its slice markers here, it's still an audio file and not a sample that you have that you're manipulating within the Dr. Octorex itself. If you want to learn more about that, you can watch one of my other tutorials on uh, creating a Rex loop. Let's look up here for the NNXT sampler here, and we can also drag and drop audio files directly into the NNXT sampler. Let me clear out the sampler here by resetting it. And now we can go and we could drag, we could even drag a Rex loop since we're already on the Rex loops here. I could drag a Rex loop directly in to it. There we go. So we've got all those individual samples in there. Or I could go to my own library here. I could go into some drum samples that I have here. I could drag this in here like this. And then as long as I have that device selected in my sequencer track, now I can actually play that sound here. I could drag a loop in there as well if I wanted to. So I have the sample itself selected right now. If I drag in a loop here, It's going to replace that sample since I have it selected. And now I can play that on my keyboard at a faster tempo, slower tempo. Or again, I can actually drag this audio loop directly into, if I don't want to manipulate it on the sampler itself, I can drag it directly into the sequencer as well and just put it on the same audio track here. 
check this out. We can hear that it's not at the right tempo since I just dragged it from the browser directly into the sequencer. It's easy enough to apply the time stretch compression, the stretch tool to it. I can just hold down option here and there it is. And that was four bars. So I'll readjust that. Take a listen to that now with the click track on again. Perfectly in time. So that covers both the ability to drag and drop samples directly into the sampler devices themselves or directly onto a track in the sequencer. And there's one other thing that we can drag into the sequencer that's I think is really neat and that's actual MIDI clips or MIDI loops. So I've got some MIDI loops here from my just collecting MIDI loops and some of my favorites here from Twiddly Beats. So I'll open this up here and I'll go to the jazz piano and I will go to, um, yeah, let's drag in some piano stuff here. Let's just pick one of these. And I can take it and drag it in and drop it anywhere in here. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a bunch of devices, of the ID8 devices, that are going to be coordinated with the MIDI samples or the MIDI loops I just brought in. There are the MIDI loops right there. If I want to just take one of these and listen to what it sounds like with that beat I just dragged in here. So then we can take a listen to what that sounds like. Oh, you notice when we brought it in here, it put the tempo at the MIDI loops tempo. It put our sequencers tempo at the MIDI loops tempo. And we were at 120 before, so that's going to be crazy slow. So I'll put it back to the tempo of the beat. and then play that. So that's kind of crazy sounding, but you get the idea. We can drag MIDI loops in too. So that means we can actually create our own MIDI performances and drag them into any of our songs, or we could get MIDI loops off of the web or wherever, and not only can we drag and drop all of our instruments and all of our effects and our patches, but we can drag in our actual performances as well. A little bit slower tempo. So there you go. Reason's amazing new drag and drop features that allow you to drag and drop pretty much everything in from the browser directly into Reason's either rack or the sequencer. And I think it's a huge improvement in terms of the overall workflow and just being able to be creative on the spur of the moment. Uh, and I look forward to hearing what you guys cook up. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, thanks for watching. See you guys soon.